All right, what is going on financial movers? Welcome to Friday. We're about to be in the weekend, but before we launch into Saturday, let's talk about the Procter & Gamble company, ticker symbol PG, currently trading at $142.61 at 2.24 percent. It's up 2.24 percent today. Excuse me. Now, you may want to click out of this, not listen to this analysis because I'm talking about Procter and Gamble. This is something your grandparents talk about. But believe me, I know it's not Neo. I know it's not Tesla. But this stock has the potential to make you rich and I will show you why. So the company's up today in a tough market. Market's really mixed, actually overall down. Procter & Gamble's up because they just reported an EPS beat by four cents beat on revenue. Now you might say that's nothing, but here is really why it's exciting. So they just reported their Q4 2021 earnings. So that means that they will now in terms of accounting be going into fiscal year 2022. And they had their organic sales were up for 4% for the year. Now this is big because Procter & Gamble, I mean, has these world iconic brands, okay? They, they're the owners of Oral-B, Pampers, Pantene, Tide, Dawn, Crest, Toothpaste, and Toothbrushes. And if you're like me, you probably use about five of these products on a daily basis. So not only are they growing, this, these organic sales numbers that are up 4%, that means that they're growing their core brands all around the world by 4%, but... Uh, you know, they're, they're core brands that people are using every single day. So that will really help continue for them to pay out a dividend yield of what they're paying out at 2.49%. Now, to top it off though, they're not stagnant. Looking ahead for fiscal year 2022, the company is expecting that organic sales growth to continue growing 2 to 4%. And then they're expecting their earnings per share growth of three to six percent. So it's looking really solid over at Procter and Gamble. We will get into the numbers, and I will give you an even more bullish case of why I believe this stock will make you rich if you hold on to it now and going into the future. But is it the time to buy it right now at $142.66? Company does have this strong resistance at 145. Uh, so you know we'll get over to the technicals later on. In the analysis, but we got to run through these numbers first so you can hear uh, Procter & Gamble's side of the story. So they got their consolidated statements of earnings coming in. They got their three months ended up at the top. And then they even got their 12 months ended over to the right of the page. So uh, they got their three months ended 2021 over 2020. They got their net sales coming in here. So they made $18.9 billion over the past three months, which was a year over year increase of 7% from $17.6 billion. Now, the company has these net sales. That's how much they made in their total revenues, but they also have cost of product sold. So what it takes for them to make this $18.9 billion, they have fixed cost of $9.7 billion. And those actually increased up from 9% uh, from $8.9 billion. But that isn't a bad thing because they have this gross profit and that increased up 5%. So where they were making gross profit of $8.7 billion last year, uh, now they're making $9.1 billion. But they also have other expenses at Procter & Gamble. So they got selling general and administrative expenses. Uh, to basically, they got to pay their people, okay? They got to pay out $5.6 billion, and that increased up 6% from $5.2 billion. But once again, it's okay to see the cost of expenses going up and cost of products sold if operating incomes and gross profits are also increasing and that's exactly what happened here so operating income they made 18.9 billion dollars in in their operating income they're keeping 3.5 billion of that which is up two percent now that may not sound like a lot but let me put this into context here their total gross margins on this operating income or not total gross margins, just operating margins, excuse me, comes in at 18.7%. Now, like I said, that may not sound like a lot, but we talked about PayPal on this channel last night, and PayPal is making 18% in operating income. So Procter & Gamble is nothing like FinTech growth stock by any means, and they're pulling out the same operating income margins as PayPal, which is really impressive, or maybe it's just not impressive of PayPal, but no, not really, I'm not taking anything away from PayPal, 
Procter & Gamble is just an awesome company, like I said, that will make you rich. So we have some other expenses in Procter & Gamble. They have interest expense, so that's the type of expense they're paying on their debt. They have interest income where they get some money put back in here. So they have total net earnings coming in at Procter & Gamble at $2.9 billion, increasing up from four point, or increasing up 4% from $2.7 billion year over year. So that looks really solid. But here's where I also believe Procter & Gamble can make all its investors rich is this dividend they pay out. So right now they're paying out a dividend rate of $3.48, which is a yield of 2.49%. Now Procter & Gamble's been paying a dividend for the past 130 years. And of the past 65 years of that 130, they've raised their dividend year after year after year. So can they afford to do that? Well, just looking at Procter & Gamble on the 12 months ended, so we're talking about the year ended, they made total net earnings of $14.3 billion, which equates to a net earnings per share of $5.69. So they're making $5.69 per year, and they're paying out investors $3.48. So they can still grow this dividend. And as an investor, I like to see that they can still grow it. And I am... I'm an owner of Procter & Gamble, if I didn't tell you that. I own Procter & Gamble stock, and so I'm just reinvesting my dividend to buy more and more shares into the future uh, whenever I see these revenue growths increasing up, organic sale growth going up, I see they're making more money and net income year after year. This is the type of stuff I like to see. So, you know, there's an old saying, buy what you know. I know Procter & Gamble brands. A lot of people around the world know them, and I believe that is what's going to continue to make them a successful company. So, now they also have their balance sheet that we have to look out. Is it a healthy company? So, they have their June 30th, 2020 over June 30th, uh, or June 30th, 2021 over June 30th, 2020. So, we have cash and cash equivalents decreasing from 16.1 billion dollars to 10.2 billion dollars now it's the first thing i noticed we're talking about a decrease of five billion dollars on the balance sheet it's not necessarily bad but we do have to take note of it whenever we get down to the cash flow to see where it went inventory stayed pretty much flat from 5.4 billion to 5.9 billion once again that's a good sign to see they're actually increasing up their net sales, how, how much of their product they're selling while inventories are just staying flat there. So a uh, good sign of like logistics going on there. So total current assets come in here at $23 billion, down slightly from $27.9 billion because of that decrease in cash to cash equivalents. They do have total current liabilities coming in here at $33.1 billion though. So uh, total current liabilities are outpacing these total current assets by about $10 billion. Now the thing to watch here is they have this debt due within one year at $8.8 .8 billion. So I'm actually not worried about these total current assets being less than total current liabilities because this debt due within one year it has to be paid off within the next year but they do have cash and cash equivalents of 10.2 billion dollars so they can afford this debt uh, but then we got total assets at Procter & Gamble at $119.3 billion and total liabilities at $72.6 billion. So long-term, uh, health of the balance sheet is looking really solid here at P&G. Lastly, we have to get down to these cash flows. And I'm actually going to show you how strong they are. So they got their 12 months ended up at the top, 2021 over 2020. And we know that over the past year that they made their net earnings of $14.3 billion. Now, what we want to see is they have these operating activities. So all the money they're squeezing out of their business and adding on to these net earnings, we're going to want to see these being higher than their total net earnings. So uh, they have depreciation and amortization which is basically money they're making off their property plant equipment so they were able to put back 2.7 billion dollars onto that onto the cash flows here they had some share based compensation they can add in here uh, loss on extinguishment of debt uh, 512 million so we get down here to total operating activities and we see an increase up to $18.3 billion. So they had net earnings of 14.3, total operating activities add on like another $4 billion here. So $18.3 billion is what the company's making uh, whenever we get through their total operating activities. This is really nice because it was an increase up from 17.4. So what you want to see on the cash flow statements. Now, company did have some investing activities. They had capital expenditures, 
which came in at $2.7 billion. Uh, but this is once again, an investment because these capital expenditures or, or if they have like repairs around their factories, uh, they have to put this money into capital expenditures. So just imagine this as like property, plant and equipment repairs. So total investing activities cost them $2.8 billion, which leaves them with uh, you know about $16 billion from their total operating activities. But here's where it starts to get expensive is that they have these financing activities, okay? They paid out dividends to shareholders at $8.2 billion for the year. Now, they also had this large treasury stock purchase, which is them buying back their own stock. So Procter & Gamble bought back $11 billion of their own shares last year. Now, this is a lot, but guess what? They're not expecting to stop here. For their fiscal year 2022 guidance, they said that they're expecting to repurchase another $7 to $9 billion a share. So this is important to note because whenever their stock does dip, you know that they have seven to nine billion dollars that they're planning on using of their own money to buy their stock on support, which will then propel those earnings up. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind. So total financing activities came in here at twenty one point five billion dollars, and they only made eighteen point three billion from total operating activities. So they did have to use that five point eight billion dollars on the balance sheet from their cash and cash equivalents that we saw, which did decrease their cash and cash equivalents down here to $10.2 billion. Now, is this a bad thing? You have to ask yourself, Procter & Gamble isn't like PayPal. It's not like AMD or NVIDIA. They don't have to put this money back into a research and development. Sure, maybe they can you know, create better logistics lines, but they don't have to create like cutting edge technology. And this is why they can afford to pay out $8 billion to shareholders and $11 billion of re stock repurchases quarter after quarter or year after year. This wasn't one quarter, but year after year. So uh, just really keep this in mind. They're going to be back paying back their own stock. Cash flows are looking good. They expect organic sales to continue increasing up and they're expecting to make more on an EPS basis for next year. And then what they did this year, this is everything you want to see in a stock and something that will make you a long-term winner, uh, buy and hold stock is this one right here, Procter & Gamble, if I've ever seen one. So they're currently trading at 142.38. Is it a buy right here? Well, me being a buy and hold person with Procter & Gamble, I'm looking very long-term. I say, yeah, like buy some stock right here at 142.36. It looks good, okay? Now, I will note though that they do have this resistance mark at 140 and it's popping out of this resistance through 140 right now. Will it stay above it? We don't know. But, uh, you know, this could prove to be next level support. So if you don't like P&G right here at 142, I would say watch for it to come down here at 140 and then maybe buy some there. Now, I'm specifically saying 140 because $140, the stock was able to get up to 140 in August of last year. And then it just traded a cons consolidation pretty much between 140, sometimes getting up to 145, but 140 being this main resistance mark from August all the way through January of this year before falling down to $121, which by the way, I was talking about this stock uh, whenever it was there in March, January of this year. And I was a big bull on it okay and here we back here we are back at 142 but anyways 140 look there to buy it first if you don't want to buy at 142 you want to get some type of slight pullback if we even get one look for it here at 140 after that i would look for it at 135 135 has proven to be a very strong support when it traded in consolidation between august through january it just kept holding that line as support and then even through April and now, it's just been trading between 140 and 135 time and time again. And we'll even put on a 20-day and a 50-day moving average. And I'm looking at this on a weekly chart. The 50-day the MA is at 133, the 20 is at 136. So we can expect both of those to give this stock support there, right where it even has a very clear pricing uh, support level there at 135. So that's a second zone to buy. First one, 140. Second one, 135. At the 
stock really starts to sell off through 135, just buy the 50 day MA at 133, maybe even look for it here at 130 or if it can get down to 127. And the 127 mark correlates exactly with the 100 day moving average at uh, $127.02. And uh, ultimately, that is going to be a really strong mark, not only because it's a 100 day moving average, but because Procter & Gamble couldn't get up and over that 127 mark since through 2019, struggled with it a little bit in 2020, and then it started to hold it as support earlier this year in March. So uh, that's I'm expecting that one to definitely be holding here. So uh, this is a buy and hold stock. I mean, if I've ever seen one, I love Procter & Gamble. I love their brands. I use them every day. For me to say I hate them and use their brands would be hypocritical, so I gotta own this stock. If you like P&G, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification button for me, and I will see you all next analysis.